A particular commentary was brought to my attention where a writer for the journal Science pointed out the risks of NAC or N-acetylcysteine supplementation and causing cancer. If you look at the title, it really makes it seem like NAC might be falling from grace, but is it? Obviously, this commentary, especially from a well-known study publishing journal, isn't written without evidence. So what evidence exists for this link between NAC consumption and cancer? By the way, if you aren't familiar with NAC, it's a molecule by the full name of N-acetylcysteine, and it's gotten quite popular because it has potent effects increasing our cells' internal antioxidant defenses. Essentially, it helps generate a potent molecule that protects from damage within our cells called glutathione. I'll leave it at that. Just know that several studies have outlined its benefit, and now here we are with <laughs> a link to cancer. The commentary points out two things. So one, that antioxidants, like NAC, aren't always good for you. And two, that NAC has been shown to accelerate cancer growth in multiple models. We'll address both, but let's discuss the second point first. First, it's mentioned that a study, this one, wherein the researchers knocked out a gene called June D in mice. This knockout effectively increases the amount of damage from oxidative stress cells experience. We even see that here. This is a measure of oxidative stress with higher numbers being worse. On the horizontal axis, we see the control, so normal animals and June D knockouts. We also see both groups are given NAC, as well as two age groups, young and old. As we can see, when we compare the June D knockout mice against the control, there's an innately elevated oxidative stress, as predicted by that particular gene knockout. You'll also notice that NAC reduces oxidative stress in all old mice, as well as young mice with this knockout, but has no effect in young control mice. So that all seems like good news. So where's the cancer scare? Well, here it is. Here, the researchers are measuring the amount of cell division using a marker called KI67. KI67 is a protein only found in dividing cells. The higher, the more cell division, generally speaking. We have the same conditions as before, and notice how NAC increases cell division across the board. This is also true for this ADK condition, which are mice with lung adenocarcinoma, which is a type of cancer. They already have several fold more cell division, but they also experience even more with NAC addition. In addition, animals fed NAC had a slightly increased rate of cancer generation based on other data. Apparently, this isn't the first study to show NAC and other antioxidants accelerate cancer growth, although also in mouse models. So this is definitely food for thought, but how should we contextualize this? Well, there's a few important things to be said, and then we'll discuss the first point about antioxidants not always being a benefit to health. So first, as some will no doubt already have commented, these are mouse studies. It's tough to immediately translate that to humans. Second, if we look at the human studies wherein participants are given NAC, the vast majority report positive outcomes across a huge array of outcomes and clinical conditions. Third, if you look at uh, metrics related to cancer in humans, like DNA damage and mitochondrial health, they tend to improve and by pretty significant amounts. Finally, fourth, it's true that we don't have any long-term studies investigating cancer risk. So is there still a possibility that these warnings could come true? Definitely. However, the randomized controlled studies up to now indicate that the evidence is trending in the opposite direction. And that includes other mouse studies as well. But what about this mention of antioxidants not always being good for us? Well, actually this isn't news. There's uh, some truth to that idea. Antioxidants, like NAC, are generally considered a benefit for their abilities of reducing oxidizing or damaging molecules. But they can be overabundant, which isn't wanted when some of those oxidizing molecules also help our cells function. It's a matter of balance. So where do I land 
everything considered here. Well, my stance on NAC has not changed. I can see how this commentary might have a few head scratching, but I appreciate the Physionic Insider that brought this to my attention. Uh, if you haven't joined the Physionic Insiders, consider it, by the way, because it's this kind of material that you'll get exposed to, along with my other work, podcasts, articles, and more. At any rate, I appreciated having this brought up because I even said this when I first started covering NAC studies, more specifically Glynac, which is another iteration of NAC. But that NAC, or Glynac, only has evidence for its use if you're over the age of like 50 to 60 and beyond, or if you're maybe a younger person dealing with some chronic condition. This probably isn't a supplement to take if you're already young and healthy. And although I hesitate to bring up these data again because they're in mice, but notice that the young mice experienced no antioxidant benefit of NAC, and that held true in short-term human studies as well. So this evidence doesn't really budge me. It actually solidifies my perspective further until I actually see human evidence indicating a cancer risk. Anyway, I thought I'd share and I cover more on NAC and its health effects in humans right here. I'll catch you over there.